um, we are set, right? Thank you so much for devoting time to join. There are some people that I always see at this event. I look forward to seeing them. There's this Dr. Hector. I always see him here. There's this Menyaga. There's this Roland. I'm seeing some people. Abisola, Funke Ajayi. Yes, she's also one of our frequent. You, know, you could tell that our students are always out to learn. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I may not be able to mention your names one after the other, but we're grateful you're able to devote time to join this event. I am not moderating. So I will introduce the moderator. She is by, um, she is Comforts. Permit me, um, you will have to introduce yourself, Comfort, because I may not pronounce your surname well. Comforts or Mokodion. The floor is yours now. Please, um, you can start the webinar immediately. Welcome, Mr. Manuel. Welcome, Comfort. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ungozi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Comfort Omoko John. I'm the process manager here at Rome Business School, Nigeria. You're welcome to today's webinar series on planning for effectiveness in marketing. Um, the concept of planning is actually not a new one. I'm sure most of us are used to planning for any activity. And seeing that um, we are still at the beginning of a new year, I know most of us uh, started our new year plans, um, to-do list and all. But the question is, um, most times at the end of the year, sometimes we look back at ourselves and then we ask ourselves this question, how well did our planning actually lead to our results? If we calculate the planning we've done so far, does it actually make up to the results we have at the end of a session or a quarter or a year? Um, so I'm sure this webinar is gonna be answering a lot of questions. So before, before I introduce um, our speaker for today, I would like to plead with every one of us, please want this session to be as interactive as possible, but I will encourage you to use um, the chat room, the chat section, feel free to share your thoughts, um, your questions. Um, the topic again is planning for marketing effectiveness. So our key, our speaker for today is someone who has over 18 years experience across consulting, banking, and the FMCG um, area. He's a well-rounded business and commercial leader with a strong track record in business, in strategy, in brand, in market, in communication. It's a whole lot. And he's also very knowledgeable about our Nigerian African custom, um, consumer space. Uh, Mr. Agu has successfully managed over 20 brands in Nigerian marketing landscape in the last two decades. It may also interest you to know that he's a multiple, multiple award winner who has just been bestowed with an outstanding marketing personality of the year 2020 and the marketing director of the year 2020 by Marketing Edge magazine and Brand Communicator magazine respectively. So I'd like us in our chats, in the chat room, please feel free to welcome, let's welcome together Mr. Emmanuel Agu, the group marketing director of Jotna Managing Limited, that is a popular Lacatera company. Mr. Limano, you're welcome. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I guess I, I start from here, right? Yes, sir. OK. Um, Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this webinar series. Um, without taking much of your time, I want to proceed with the, with the presentation. So I'm going to share my screen now so that uh, I will take us through what I have for us this afternoon. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, sir, we can see your screen. Okay. If you can see my screen, I want to start now. By my time, this is more like a six minutes past one. So let me go straight to my presentation. And maybe after the presentation, we will now have a question and answer. Okay. Planning for marketing effectiveness. 
have this content laid out for us, and this will be the, the driver of this presentation. What is planning, what is marketing effectiveness, and why? <clears throat> Factors to consider why planning, how planning aids effectiveness in marketing, <clears throat> typical marketing planning cycle, individual brand planning, and how it fits into wider marketing plan, best practices for maximizing marketing effectiveness, <clears throat> and then how to measure marketing effectiveness. What is planning, by the way? Planning is the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve a desired goal. It is the first and foremost activity to achieve desired results. I define planning again as there are three main types of plans that a manager will use in his or her pursuit of company goals. And these plans include operational plans, tactical plans or strategic plans. Operational plans are necessary to attain tactical plans and tactical plans lead to the achievement of strategic plans. So you can see that they are interwoven. There are also plans to back up plans that fail. So when you make a plan, there is also a plan, should the plan that you've, you've made before fail? And that's what we call a backup plan, plans to back up a plan that fail. And these are known as contingency plans. Then what is marketing effectiveness? Marketing effectiveness is the measure of how effective a given marketer's go-to-market strategy is towards meeting the goals of maximizing their spending to achieve positive results. And this happens in both the short and the long term. And it's also related to what we call the MROI, which is the Marketing Return on Investment. Marketing effectiveness, again, is an important step in the life cycle of any company as it is often a major contributor in the connection between strategy and execution. And what do I mean here? You can have one of the best strategy and then, but you need to layer it with effectiveness. Connecting effectiveness, connecting strategy with marketing effectiveness and to execution, then you have a brilliant result. Because the truth is that you might have a brilliant strategy, brilliant execution, but you are using a sledgehammer to kill an ant. Will you call that marketing effectiveness? I don't think so. It is not marketing if it is not measured. Okay? Why marketing effectiveness? Why do we have to inculcate marketing effectiveness in our plan? Because today's marketing landscape is more complex than ever and has a number of obstacles that marketers must overcome in order to effectively reach, engage, and convert new and existing customers. And due to the pro proliferation of channels and devices, Consumers are more demanding than ever. Therefore, marketers must constantly develop and coordinate experiences that consumers find meaningful and trustworthy. And what are we saying? If you look at the market today, there are multiple channels, there are multiple devices, there are multiple locations. And it is expected of a marketer to be effective in his or her chosen channels or occasions where he or, or she operates. There's likelihood that you might not be in every channels or in every occasions, but how have you been able to optimize the channels 
or the occasions where you are playing. If I take a CSD, for example, carbonated soft drink, which is my current, uh, current category or a current industry where I play, it is not in every channels that you play. There are open markets, there are over the counter, there are provision stores, there are um, groceries and supermarkets. And then there are other different channels. There are bars and restaurants. You need to make conscious decisions where you want to operate and then deploy your scarce marketing resources to those channels and to those occasions where you get the bulk of your sales. And these are all related to marketing effectiveness. Thus planning for marketing effectiveness becomes imperative if the marketers must succeed in the ever-changing consumer world. You agree with me that the consumer world is changing. So many of us we got into last year, first quarter, January, February, March, end of February, the COVID case was registered in Nigeria. March, we're managing April, there was a lockdown and then the whole thing changes. The entire consumer lifestyle, their shopping behaviors as a result of COVID, the way consumers even appreciate marketing communication changes dramatically. How planning aids effectiveness in marketing? These are more like the key factors or the top informations and how planning aids marketing effectiveness. One, planning helps you to increase efficiency. It reduces business related risk. It facilitates proper coordination. It aids in organizing, gives right direction, keeps good control, helps to achieve objectives, motivates the personnel, encourages creativity and innovation, and helps in decision-making. So when you have a proper plan set in place, you are already on your way to achieving effectiveness in your marketing. But if you don't have a proper planning, you will be tossed to and fro like, the, like, like a seaweed that is being tossed by the waves of the sea, you become very unstable. You become very disorganized. And that will not lead to a very good result or performance for your business. Then I needed to bring Pestil and some of the <clears throat> other tools that aided planning and invariably also helps in a, aiding a marketing effectiveness. Even prior to doing personal analysis in an organization where you want to set out your plan, you first have to conduct what we call an audit. And this audit is all about looking at industry analysis. What industry are you playing? And what are the things that are going on in those industry? How has the industry grown or how has it declined over a period of five years or over a period of three years or over a period of two years? You need to conduct an industry analysis. And then after you finish doing this industry analysis, you can look into personal analysis. And PESTIL simply stands for political, economic, social or sociocultural, technological, legal, and environmental. And environmental in this case is not in the way Nigerian use environmental. It is not uh, coming out every Saturday or every last Saturday to clean the environment. So with personal analysis, it helps you to review factors that are not in the organization's control, but are likely going to influence business operations and brand performance either positively or negatively. And the analysis can be used in strategic decision-making. You can use personal analysis to produce your SWOT, 
If time permits, I will also talk about SWOT, which in turn will help an organization to identify and prepare for potential opportunities, risk, or threat. And in this presentation, I try to put, give a little example of trying to describe this question. And then I said one on the factor, youthful demographic profile, 70% of population age under 30 and average age is 20. With this information, what is the impact to your business? And here I'm using um, CSD as an example. If you have a youthful demographic profile, 70% of the population, which is typical of a Nigerian setting, are under the age of 30, and the average age is 20. We all know that consumption of carbonated soft drink is heavy within this age band. So it means that there will be continued growth potential for CSDs as the average age globally of a CSD drinker is between the age of 18 to 25. And here in Nigeria, an average age of 70% of the population that is under the age of 30 is 20. So it means a very potential upside for carbonated soft drink business. So for anyone who is into the carbonated soft drink business, you know that you are still guaranteed a business in this country, maybe in the next decade. And another factor is Lagos State government increasingly concerned about environmental degradation. What is this implication to soft drink manufacturers? Maybe soft drink company, companies may be mandated to provide recycling facilities, or they may be forced to stop the manufacturing of PET and go into RGB, returnable glass bottle. So these are some of the things that when you do your pestle analysis very well, it gives you a clear understanding of what is to happen and how to plan your business. And then after you're done with pestle analysis, you get into what I call category analysis. You have done the industry analysis and let me break it down. If I want to look at industry analysis from, from a carbonated suffering point of view, I will not only look at uh, the industry that I'll be looking at will be non-alcoholic beverage industry because that is the industry where we play. So within the non-alcoholic beverage industry, you have carbonated soft drink, you have malt, you have a uh, yogurt, you have juices, and you have all the milk-based products. So I look at the industry at a whole. And after looking at the industry at a whole, and I do my personal analysis, and then I will come back again to look at the category analysis. Within this category analysis, I'm looking at the CSD, calling out CSD industry out from the non-alcoholic beverage industry. Because there could be a boom in the non-alcoholic beverage industry, but that may not mean or translate that there will be a boom in the carbonated soft drink industry. So you look at the industry where you play as a whole, and then you narrow down to the category where you play, which is the CSD industry. So who are the leaders? Who are the losers? Who are the, who are the what are these? So you have to do a detailed category analysis to know where your brands are and then to know what next to do. And then after you have done um, category analysis, you also look at what I call the consumer rationale, the five W's and H. And what are the five W's and H? The first W is the what? What are your products? And what are your proposition on these products? Then the next W is who? And who here represents your target? Who are you targeting? What are their demographics? And then the next one is the why. Why here stands for consumer needs and reasons for buying. Why would this consumer buy your product for God's sake? And then the next one is the when. 
What and when stands for occasions? At what occasions are they most likely going to buy your product? And the last W is where. And where simply stands for channels. So what are the probable channels that you can take your product that will give you 20% um, of that channel that you cover is most likely going to give you 80% of your volume. So, and then the last hedge, which is the how. How do you go to market? In this case, it is a reflection of the pack and price. What SKU are you going to use to assess the occasions and the channels? Is it a 60 CL? Is it a 35? Is it a 50? Is it a, a 75? Is it a 65? And what are the prices for each of these SKU? And then how do you do a pricing analysis in terms of where to play with each of these SKUs? Because if you look at Lagos, you see that typical of a CSD market, Lagos is dominated. Yeah. Why the only company that produces a 65 CL content CSD are the Ajayist. Ajayist is the makers of the famous uh, Big Cola. And then the right foods, the Lacaceras, the Coca Cola, the Pepsis are um, gravitating ar around the 60 CL. But when you go outside Lagos and Southwest, you see that 60 CL and 65 CL is not rampant you begin to see 50 CL, you begin to see 35 CL predominantly in the north. Because you need to have a strategy on how you manage your skew in order to generate the right margin for your company and for your product. So these under person, I'm gonna talk more things as I go forward, but let me stop here for now so I can run through my presentation. I've explained personal, but I wanted to put it in proper perspective here. Factors to be considered. When you talk about political, you are talking about government policies under personal, you're talking about taxation, example taxation, elections, political and social unrest. You talk about economic, you're talking about GDP forecast, unemployment, inflation, interest rates, raw material and forex availability. All these things will have an impact on your planning. For example, the dollar that used to be 360, to exchange rate that used to be 360 per dollar is now 390, 396 from BDC and in the open market is gravitating around 460 to 475, 480. How would this impact your production or your purchase of raw materials? Will it have an impact on your pricing? Yes. Will it have an impact on your logistic or your go-to market? Yes. You look at social, demographic profile, income distribution, and disposable income. What are the lifestyle and attitudes? Are there issues like obesity concerns? If you're looking at carbonated soft drink, are people really worried that too much uh, intake of CSD cause them to be obese? What are the educational levels? Internet, social media use. Then you get to technological, cell phone subscription, internet access, IT development, new discoveries. How is this impacting your business? Then on legal, you have regulatory authorities, NAVDAQ, example NAVDAQ, APCON, Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council, formerly known as CPC, laws and edicts, advertising laws, competition laws, employment laws, health and safety, federal and local taxes seriously under consideration. And then on environmental, you talk about energy availability, consumption and cost, government policies, waste disposal, recycling. So putting this into context, it helps you to shape your plan. Now, I also want to talk about uh, one of the factors to be considered in, uh, in making your plan and in in auditing your planning process, which, we, which I call the Porter's five phases of competitive analysis. 
Number one is the bargaining power of customers. I will explain in the next slide on this. Bargaining power of suppliers. Threats of new entrants. Competitive rivalry within an industry. And then threat of substitute products. And Potter's five is explained here. When we talk about threat of new entrants, we're talking ab about barriers to entry. Is the business you are operating, is it so, so difficult for other companies to just walk in, for a portfolio investor to just walk in? Is this something that is so easy that somebody can just wake up one morning and you will get into your business? Barriers to entry. Prior to now, getting into a CSD space has been a very difficult one in the last 30 years because the barriers to entry is very high. For you to get into a CSD business, you need to have the capacity to produce glasses. And most of the traditional FMCG businesses that are in CSD all have glass factories. So for you to get into it, you need a glass factory that will produce your glass. So by the time you look at the monumental cost involved in producing your own glass, you will just back out. So because they have high barriers to entry, they have dominance in the market. But that has barriers to entry was made a means meet by a simple innovation orchestrated by La Casera 20 years ago. And that innovation took CSD packaging from glass bottle to pet bottle. And then that huge barrier to entry orchestrated by owning a glass factory was broken. And then you see that the moment CSDs started getting bottled in pet. Competitions doubled and tripled everywhere. Otherwise, it would have been the traditional incumbents that have the financial muscles to own glass factories. Because if you get into that space, they will be the one that will produce your glass for you. When you become fierce and ferocious and difficult for them to tackle and manage you, they can, they can cancel your contract of glass production and then you fizzle out of the market naturally. So how is the barriers to entry? Economics of scale, brand loyalty. There are some brands that have built some strong loyalty that if you as a competitor want to enter into that space, you just better tell yourself the truth. That it might, it might take a very, very long time to crack these brands and take them away from their consumers. Capital requirements, I've talked about it. Cumulative experience in the industry, government policies, access to distribution channels, and switching costs. You look at bargaining power of suppliers, number of suppliers, size of suppliers, uniqueness of each supplier's product or service, focal company's ability to substitute and switching cost, bargaining power of buyers, number of customers, size of each customer order, differences between competitors, price sensitivity, buyer's ability to substitute, buyer's information availability, switching cost. And then you look at the threat of substitute products or services. Number of substitute products available, buyer propensity to substitute, Relative price performance of substitute, perceived level of product differentiation, then switching cost. Rivalry among existing competitors. You talk about number of competitors in the market, diversity of competitors, industry concentration, industry growth, quality differences, brand loyalty, barriers to entry, switching cost. If you look at this slide, you will see that switching costs seems to cut across all the, all the levels because there is a cost to switch a customer from one brand to the other. Are you willing to pay that cost? So when you get back here and you look at Potter's five, 
purposes of competitive analysis. These portals five help you to analyze the competitors that you have within your industry or within your category. And then that gives you a transparent view, an opinion of how you stand vis-a-vis -vis your industry competitors and help you to shape your plan. Clear. Then um, I get into what I call a typical marketing cycle. I've talked about audit and analysis. When I talked about industry, category, consumer, rationale, and stuff like that. Even within this audit and analysis, you can also look at your current position. What is your current position as a company? I mean, if you're gonna look at your performance versus target last year, how have you fared? And your performance versus target last year becomes a very strong enabler for you to, to help you to set your performance for the current year. You may have set out set a, a target that is very unrealistic. And then you are beating yourself to the dust. But when you look at your performance versus target of last year, it helps you to be realistic in shaping and in setting your current year performance versus what your target should be. Performance analysis. And then what are the activities that you've done that last year that led to the result that you have? These are things that you need to audit and analyze. And then before you get into planning, and then after the planning has been done, I will take us through a full scale planning process. Then you get into implementation. And then after implementing, it is still not effectiveness if you're not able to evaluate. You need to evaluate your activities and then you need to put controls. So this is a typical marketing cycle. This I have explained, so I'm not gonna run through these uh, words. Then the planning and control cycle. First, you need to identify goals and objectives, identify potential strategies which might contribute towards achieving those objectives. Evaluate each strategy, choose alternative courses of action, implement the long term in the form of annual budget, measure actual results and compare with the plan, and then respond to divergences from the plan. In some organization, before you even start with the identification of goals and objectives, you need to put the company's vision first. What is the vision of this company? What's their long-term vision? Because the vision of the companies would definitely drive the goals and objectives. But in some organization, they move into goals and objectives. But I just put it here for emphasis sake. Now you get into individual planning. Now that you know the steps of planning, and how it fits into the wider marketing plan. Individual plan must feed into the company commercial business plan or ambition. In most organization, you have what we call the ABP, annual business plan. So this annual business plan is like the total company's plan. So supply chain have to do their own plan on how to manage efficiencies and production, logistics and distribution. Finance have to do their own plan on how to manage investment. Are they going to take loan? Are they going to raise commercial papers? <coughs> how are they going to manage cost? The same thing with human resources. The same thing with every other organization procurement subunits of each of the organization, they will have their annual business plan. And because this topic is planning for marketing effectiveness, the marketing team should also have their plan, which feeds into the company commercial business plan and ambition. So the marketing plan is a subset of the annual business plan of the entire organization and must feed into the ambition and the plan of the organization. If the organization is looking at a 20% growth, 
The marketing plan should not be saying anything less than that. So why a marketer is involved in the overall company's business plan, he also has to develop his own plan, the marketing plan to fit into this overall annual business plan for the organization. And this must align with strategic goals or the strat plan vision of the organization. If it's an organization that is expanding, marketing plan must show intensity, must show the relevance, must show capability in what they want to do to help the organization to expand. And that fits into the strat plan vision of the organization. It must align with the overall brand portfolio strategy. And I repeat, brand portfolio strategy. Because when you are doing a marketing plan, remember, marketing is a subset of the entire business. But within marketing, you have brands. I have Ferus looking at me on this slide. There's a brand manager for Ferus. There's a brand manager for La Casera. There's a brand manager for Smooth. There's a brand manager for Coca-Cola. There's a brand manager for Biggie Cola. And there are different brand managers. So each of these different brand managers will develop a brand plan. And this brand plan that they have developed must align with the overall brand portfolio strategy. So the portfolio strategy is the umbrella strategy that guides What the end so fits in budget provision for the year. You must know what is the advertising. You must know that the budget provision must comply with the agreed brand planning template. There is a standardized brand planning template, template customized by a different organization on how they do their plan. So why you want to do your plan as a brand manager or as a marketing manager for a particular brand, you have to use the agreed brand planning template that makes it easy to fit into the, the, the portfolio strategy. Factors driving marketing effectiveness. Factor number one is business strategy. From business strategy, it fits into the marketing strategy. Marketing strategy fits into marketing execution, to marketing infrastructure, to marketing alignment to sales. Big, 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 big uh, 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 number here. Marketing alignment to sales, big, uh, very important. And then marketing capital. And then underneath it is marketing measurement. I take them one after the other, business strategy. By business strategy, it is understanding the strategic vision of the company, the goals, and the year-to-year -year requirements for growth. Establishing the customer profile and spend requirements to ensure all marketing is aligned with company strategy. Then we talk about marketing strategy here. Improving marketing effectiveness can be achieved by employing a superior marketing strategy that connects to the business strategy, right? And then by positioning the product or brand correctly, the product or brand will be more successful in the market than competitors, to product, uh, competitors product and brands. A strategy that is attracting and retaining the right customer profile, a strategy building brand value and equity. 
marketing execution. Strategy without measured execution is considered useless. And that is true. So how marketers go to market and the channels they select can achieve significantly greater results when aligned correctly. And with high quality communication plans, utilizing the right mix of communication tactics to meet new buyers behavior while connecting with the target audience then the efficiencies of marketing are established. At tactical level, marketers can improve their effectiveness by managing and executing each of their marketing campaigns better. And this is not limited to editing of websites, organic search results, and all the things that we do at tactical level. Marketing infrastructure. Number one on the on marketing infrastructure here is um, improving the business of marketing can lead to significant gains for the company. But here is utilization of highly developed marketing automation tools, tools like the CRM softwares that allow companies to develop highly customized and targeted communications that resonate with target audience. And then there are many tools available to marketers to meet their demands. So what are the tools that you are using? What are your digital tools? What are your social media tools? What are the softwares that you use to do your analysis? What are the research tools your data scientist is using to profile consumers to be sure that you are getting the right information at the right time? You need strong marketing infrastructure to do this job. Marketing alignment to sales. Oftentimes, most marketing plans fail at this point. And it has been a battle, age long battle between marketing and sales who take the kudos of a job well done. Sometimes salespeople misunderstand marketing people and sometimes marketing people misunderstand salespeople. Sales people, they look at marketing people, they come to the office, they dress nice, wear good shirts, stay in air-conditioned office, speak grammars, play with their phone in the name of a community management or social media and all whatnot. But they are the ones that are in the field, moving from one customer to the other, from one channel to the other, canvassing for sales, recruiting new, new users and managing existing users. But I tell us something, in a very functional marketing organization, the role of marketing is to make sales superfluous. If marketing people have done their job well, it will not be difficult for salespeople to sell. Marketing can be likened to an air force that goes into the air with their aircraft, with their jet bombers, Spread the, spread, spread the bombs, and then sales can be likened as the ground troop that goes in after the Air Force team has shelled the enemy territory, the sales force put the boots on the ground and then make mincemeat of what is remaining of the enemies on ground. If your marketing organization is not working in this tandem with the sales team, then there's something principally wrong. But marketing must align with sales. And this is where engagement is required mostly. When you put up your plan as a marketing person, you need to sell this plan to a salesperson, to a sales team. If you're a marketing director, when you put up your plan, you need to sit down with the sales director or with the commercial director to align with every word in your plan. And in most organizations, they have what we call marketing sales alignment meeting. And this is where you align your plan on quarterly basis or monthly basis to make sure that the average salesman in the field understands what marketing is doing and, and sees his role in what marketing is doing and know what needs to be done. If there is no alignment between marketing and sales, sorry, you're not gonna achieve effectiveness in, in trade. You're not gonna achieve effectiveness. 
Marketing actions must be aligned to the sales and trade marketing effort, contributing the right communications and content that will support the sales and trade marketing outcomes. Continual feedback and measurement of the performance of sales and trade marketing with marketing leads is, as, is an important part of marketing effectiveness measurement. You have to. And one of the big prayers any man can pray to a marketing person is to wish you that may the sales force be with you. If you're a marketing person and the sales force is not with you, you're not gonna, you're, you're not gonna last long on that position before you'll be kicked out. And I say in this meeting, do your plan, align with sales, align with trade marketing, and may the sales force be with you. When we talk about marketing capital, what are we talking about here? We're talking about marketing personnel. Effectiveness of marketing is directly impacted by the quality of personnel within the marketing team and their level of experience and competencies, acumen and what have you. You cannot achieve marketing effectiveness even when you have the right planning. If the people running the team does not have the requisite and commensurate uh, experience to drive it. And that's what we see in many organizations today. You have marketing directors, marketing managers that does not have the requisite competencies to manage a brand. And then they are driving a brand. And when you see communication out there, you begin to ask yourself, how could someone sit down in the office and think about this? And is happy to deliver this kind of communication out there in the public. What are the qualities of people you have in your marketing team? What are the recruitment process that brings people into your organization? Is it a party party type? Or is it the one that is anchored on federal character? Oh, there are so many Igbo people in this marketing department, we need to dilute them with Yoruba people. Or there are so many Hausa people here, we need to dilute them with Igbo people. Effectiveness and planning for marketing effectiveness starts with having the resource, the right resource, because it is the personnel that will drive this process. And where the personnel is incompetent, is not well trained. Then it takes a bad man to have a bad luck. If it is not measured, it is not effective. Marketing must be measured from, for return on investment and it must be understood for its complementary value to that return on investment. Best practices for maximizing effectiveness. I say number one, leverage the right data. What data are you using? Who are your research partners? How competent are your research agencies? How competent? Who are the ones that does retail audit for you? Who are the ones that does a brand health scores for you? Who are the ones that does segmentation studies for you? Who are the ones that does serious market audit for you? How competent are they? Are you using a roadside research agency? If your research agencies are not competent and you're not using the right one, then you are blind in what is happening in the marketplace. Because data is life. If you have the wrong data of what is going on in the marketplace, you're gonna make a wrong decision. And wrong decision will lead to wrong performance. And wrong performance will lead to a lot of ineffectiveness and inefficiencies. Take advantage of people-based marketing. How do you do your marketing? Is it people-centric? Or you just do what you feel, what your gut is telling you? And people-based marketing is an output of research because from your data, you will know that this is what the people want and then you give it to them. But if you don't have the right data that gives you the right forensic insight into what is the right trend of consumer behavior, you're gonna apply the wrong thing in the marketplace. 
then you need to stay up to date on new MarTech and AdTech. What are the MarTech and AdTech? We're talking about marketing technology and our advertising technology. When you get into the digital space, now digital is moving from digital to free digitalization. How current are you with the relevant marketing technology, the tools and the things that is needed to do marketing? Are you still only concentrated on four, on, on, on four Ps? Marketing has advanced and you need to advance with it. Embrace advanced measurement approaches on how you measure your performances in trade. There are several measurement tools out there on the internet that you can take and then you'll be rest assured that when you put in one cobble into the market, you are getting the right and effective measurement of the value of the money that you put in the marketplace. And that will tell you whether you are doing well or you're not doing well. I've talked through this. I'm gonna skip all these slides because I don't, have, I don't have to repeat myself again on this. But because these uh, slides will be provided for the participants, you can read it and see my views on them. So that uh, I'll close within the time frame. I have uh, four minutes left if, I'm, if, if, this is, if my research is correct. So here, how to measure marketing effectiveness. You're probably spending money on areas that reap no real return on investment. Look at your brand at the center. Look at all the things that are around it. Are these things all necessary to do in one year? If they are not necessary, pick what is relevant to your brand per time and do it and be effective. Half the money you spend on marketing is wasted. The problem is which half? You don't even know which half of the money that is wasted because you want to be, you want to be everything to everybody in the marketplace. And then you now end up isolating your budget and wasting a lot of money. Only if only that money can be better allocated to other areas with proven marketing effectiveness, the potential upside would be very great. And what is this telling us? Be mindful of what you do with limited budget. There are several opportunity space that will stay up to you, but you need to know which of those opportunity space gives you the highest mileage that you need and put your investment behind it. Do you measure effectiveness of your marketing? It is a cliche, right? You can't manage what you can't measure. That is right. But cliches are cliches for a reason. And the reason is more often than not because they are true. And these are facts. How to measure marketing effectiveness. Number one is marketing contribution to revenue. Number two is pipeline growth and acceleration. Number three is conversion rates. Number four is cost per lead, cost per opportunity. And number five is brand awareness. And then I take them bit by bit, marketing contribution to revenue. What percentage of overall company revenue can be traced back to your marketing team's effort? The company has made SY revenue. They published their numbers on the, on the stock exchange. We posted the 25 billion profit after tax. And I asked us marketing people, what percentage of this overall company revenue can be traced back to your marketing team's effort? Obviously, the higher the number, the more effective your initiatives, if you're doing the right thing. A lot goes into telling this story and it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. As some areas of effectiveness, like brand awareness and website activity may take longer to translate into revenue, or may benefit the company in non-monetary ways. Yes, because some marketing contribution to revenue could be non-monetary. Otherwise, how do you measure brand equity? How do you translate it into Naira and Kobo? When you look at the famous brands in the world that have been in existence for over 100 years, 
they build strong equity that anywhere in the world they are known. Those equity, if you put them in Naira and Kobo, could mean a lot of things. But if you are managing a new brand, it behoves the organization to also know that it takes time to build a brand and for its equity to endure over a time limit, over a time frame. Sometimes marketing activities does not yield immediate return within the year that it was invested. But cumulatively, it builds up. And over the years, you see the impact. Pipeline growth and acceleration. How do you help to grow and accelerate your pipeline? How does this growth and acceleration change from one month or quarter to the next? Towards the last slide, I will show us something that looks like a, a marketing funnel. And then I will use it to explain this pipeline growth and acceleration even more. Your team's ability to fill the pipeline with new leads and to keep those leads moving down the funnel is a critical component of overall effectiveness. Conversion rates. Conversion rates can tell a number of different stories depending on where you are looking at. For example, you might measure conversion rates based on channels, channel to determine the effectiveness of efforts on any one channel, or you might measure conversion rates based on stage in the buyer's journey to determine the effectiveness of particular campaigns to move leads down the funnel. When you advertise, put a new advertising today out there in the marketplace, and you look at the conversion funnel, you will see that some people will just, by virtue of your advertising, will be aware of your product. But that they are aware of that product, they may not take any action. Some people will be aware, and then they take action. From taking action, they even get down to a point that they become an advocate or an evangelist for your brand. They don't only consume your brand, but when they see another person drinking competitor brand, they will start preaching to that person. Why are you drinking this brand instead of this? Every marketing and brand person wants to get his conversion rate from awareness or or available to brand evangelists to a point where people are not just advocates or not just adorers of your brand, they become evangelists for your brand. Cost per lead, cost per opportunity. How many of these can you convert? Those leads that get into your, into, into your social media page. How do you convert them? And how do you get them to a desired result? Brand awareness. Understanding brand awareness is especially important in industries with longer sales cycles. As buyers today tend to do far more research on their own before ever reaching out to a company for, for more information. So it's important that you build brand awareness. It is important to know that oftentimes the result of brand awareness are more long-term. So don't expect an immediate return here. So when you do your advert, when you create your awareness program, as much as we put measurable metrics to measure them, but be expectant that the more you do this, the more you get your brands known, and then on a the longer term, it will yield positive results. Then the purchase funnel. I've talked about this when I talked about uh, pipelining and acceleration, and then you, uh, brand awareness, you can also see it here. So when you look at this funnel, you see that it is broken down into three, inform, persuade, and remind. At inform level, consumers or customers are just aware of your brand. They have an opinion, maybe, or maybe not. At the persuade level, they are giving you consideration. Oh, I think I, I may like to buy these two shirts sanitizer. Then there's an intention to purchase. 
and then there's traffic. And then you get to sales. And from sales, depending on how you have managed them after sales service, it can lead to loyalty. So, and how do you create, what are the necessary marketing tools that you need to drive each of these, uh, uh, um, each of these stages? At awareness level and opinion, you need mass advertising, public relations, national ads, web banners, and then at consideration and intention and traffic, you need relationship marketing, social networking, direct mail, call centers, loyalty, magazines, and then at sales and loyalty level, you need personal selling. Personal selling, point of, point of purchase to serve as a reminder. Gentlemen and ladies, thank you for Thank you for listening to me, sparing your one hour, five minutes to listen to this presentation. I think I've come to the end of this presentation and I will wait to hear your questions and to answer your questions to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you so much, sir. It's it has been really enlightening. My notes, I've, take, I've taken quite a lot of things and I've written a whole lot. It has been really enlightening. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we have a few questions here. Um, someone would like to know, um, how best can marketers develop strategies to tackle those factors arising from the pistol analysis you explained earlier? How best can marketers develop strategies to tackle those factors arising from pistol analysis. Okay. Um, first, like I said, when you do your industry analysis, do personal analysis, maybe get into SWOT, these things are steps that you take to develop a plan, right? You do the industry analysis, you need to understand the industry where you play. You need to understand the environmental factors via personal, personal analysis. You also need to do some SWOT. Understand your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Look at category analysis. Look at your consumer rationale. Look at your current position from prior year. Look at performance versus target. Look at your performance analysis, activities that you did last year, and their results. What is the competitive context where you play? Then what is the market outlook? Most organizations have a brand building tools or a, a brand planning tools. I've worked in, uh, in Guinness, Nigeria, and I've worked in Heineken. When, when we want to do a plan in Guinness, we have our, our tools on how to put frame by frame, these things that I mentioned, and understanding where there are gaps in the market and where you need to focus on. But understanding those tools means also that you need to also have a very robust brand building module that tells you where the gaps are. In Diageo, there's what they call the Diageo way of building brands. We call it the DWIP. And in Heineken, you have what we call the Heineken Global Commerce University, GCU. These things gives you tools of each of uh, tools by which most of these organizations build their brands. But in Lakasera and in Jopna, I developed a tool, a brand planning tools for the organization. And we takes into consideration if I run you through it, it takes into industry analysis, category analysis, consumer rationale, personal analysis, current position of the company, performance versus target, performance analysis, activities undertaken, and the result, competitive context. Then I also look at um, a market outlook. Then I bring the tools, the brand building tools, where I will now say, okay, for Lacacera, 
what is the major problem of this brand? And these are called out from the data that we get from the data scientists. Is it an imagery problem? Or is, is it a marketing problem? Or is it a trade marketing problem? Or is it a sales problem? Because you might just have a sales problem and that sales problem could just be that the quality of your product is bad. And I tell you the truth, there is no long lasting marketing solution to a bad product. Once a product is bad, it is bad. You can sustain it with heavy advertising and campaign, but there is no long lasting solution or panacea for a bad product. So if it is a, a case of a bad product, then the solution will be to do a reformulation or to call the product off and go for a new product. So in that case, you, talk, you think about innovation, you think about uh, renovation. So in some of those tools, you look at uh, brand positioning, you look at a uh, communication, you look at the uh, quality of your product, you look at innovation and renovation, you look at, um, at visibility, trade point of, point of sales material, you look at promotions and discount. So there's no way you look at promotions, is your product having a promotion issue? Look at the uh, visibility, how much visible are you in trade? Then look at the uh, innovation and renovation. Then look at um, uh, how do you maximize your pack size and price? You are, you are selling a product with, 60, with uh, 35 CL, but what the market is demanding is 60 CL. Or you're even selling at 35 CL, but your price is even more expensive than somebody selling at 60 CL. You need to look at how do you maximize your pack, pack type and prices. Then you now have to look at uh, communication. Then look at your brand identity and then brand positioning. There's no way you look at the arrays almost close to nine uh, marketing, different marketing, um, different marketing stands, stands that you can use to put your brands that you will not find where any of these brands are lacking. It might be that your brands does not have a compelling brand pro pro uh, proposition. You have a brand, nobody understands what your brand is saying to them. When you say Volvo today, People know that Volvo is, is built for ruggedity. When you say Apple phone, people know what it means. When you talk about your brand, does it have a compelling proposition? If it doesn't, it might even be part of the job that you need to do. When your brand have a strong and compelling brand proposition, is it well communicated? How good and how well have you communicated your brand? And what are your media mix? What are your channels? Do you only communicate on radio? Do you mix it with outdoor? Do you, are you strong on social media? Are you strong on television? So what are your different communication channels? Assuming research is telling you that the awareness level of your brand is low. So you need to dial up awareness via communication. And then you need a strong uh, brand personality or what I call an iconic brand identity. When you see the logo of Apple anywhere in the world, you know it is Apple. When you see the logo of Nike, the Swiss sign, you don't need any blind man to tell you what it stands for. Brands need to have strong brand iconic identity. How iconic is the identity of your brand is? Then you look at that. You look at the quality of your product. Are you producing high quality product? Is consumers and trade complaining about your quality? If they are complaining, then you need to deal with it. Because if you don't deal with it, every other thing will not stand. Nobody likes to buy a bad product. Nobody likes to buy a product that will be poisonous to itself. Then when you look at product, you look at innovation. Are there opportunity for you to innovate? Then before you now go into part type, and price and go into visibility. How visible is your product out there? And then promotions and discount and the rest. These are the various uh, platforms from which you can develop your, your plan.
I hope I tried my best in answering this question. Thank you so much. Hello, Mr. Emmanuel. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Okay, may, may I add again that after you have done all this, you need to have an activity calendar on when each of these things that you have planned to do will take place. Smart organizations are starting the year executing. In this general, people have started executing because they would have done their planning by quarter four last year. Briefs have gone to the agencies, planning done and concluded. And then as you're getting into January, first week, second week of January, they hit the ground running. But some people will just start now. By the way, it is not too late. But if you want to have a fast start of the year, you need to plan in the last quarter of the prior year to be able to have an effective hitting the ground running in the first quarter of the new year. So you have to put an activity calendar when each of these activities will run. You have to put a, a performance tracking and set a very tight fixed KPIs, key performance indicators. Then there has to be a budget breakdown, a template that shows how much budget that you are allocating to each of the activity. And then after you have done this, you need to also set up what we call key risks and issues to the plan. What are the risks that you have on this plan? What are the issues that may come up? Many of us, when we were doing our plan, 2019 against 2020, nobody envisaged COVID. Nobody envisaged maybe there could be natural disaster, there could be fire, there could be anything. But you need to put this on, on your plan. And that is where you do a backup plan for your plan. If there is a natural disaster, if there is a breakdown of law and order, if there is endless MSARS in Nigeria, if there's lockdown today, what do we do? So there have to be key risks and issues that you need to put behind your plan. And then when you put this, then it gives you an all-round protection. What did we do in La Casera business last year that saw us meeting our, our full year target in October before the end of the year? We started early because we planned very well in the last quarter of 2019. So as we're getting into 2020, boom, in February, we came out with uh, four new products. The bold ginger, the bold orange, the bold tropical, and the bold bitter lemon. And through to type in March, April, there was a lockdown. All the other organizations that want to roll out new products in the market could not do anything because there was no movement. But we already have our product in trade. And we have planned our supply chain. Uh, raw materials and everything was on ground. And while people were sitting at home, our production is going on thanks to government for counting us as essential essential, uh, um, what they call us? They call us essential companies then. So we're allowed to, to, to compute our production. But imagine if it is in, fact in January that we started planning how to launch new product. We may not be able to roll out before there was a lockdown. And when there was a lockdown, immediately we transited all offline marketing activities into the digital space. So while we are sitting at home, we're working. We are interacting and we are relating with our consumers. And by October, we are done with the year. Whatever we did in November and December was just an add-on. But we're not under pressure. And that is what planning can help you do. When you plan very well, you save yourself high blood pressure. And then you save yourself unnecessary pressure and tension in the office. OK, let me stop here and wait for next question. Wow, thank you so much, sir, for that. Um, another question we have here, um, someone is asking, for the CSD sector where you play, um, how are you handling the maintenance of packaging waste of your products in order to um, engender packaging sustainability? Like, how are you handling the maintenance of packaging um, product waste? 
Well, we package menace is a, is a, is a general problem for all CSD companies, but then there is a, there is a movement for that that is called Fibra um, Alliance for Beverage Recycling. So we, we, are, we are in touch with government in terms of how to start uh, recycling. If you can look at uh, Coca-Cola now with the new product of uh, Sprite that, that, that came with a clear plastic. So that clear plastic is a measure towards uh, recycling and sustainability because with clear plastic uh, PET bottles, it is more easier to recycle. So the, the group is working in tandem on how to set up a, a, a recycling alliance that will help them to take charge of the, the menace that is orchestrated by uh, pets that is lying fallow everywhere. But then we also need to understand that there's a difference between pets and plastics. And this is the consumer education that we need to do as organization. Because people sometimes misunderstood that polyethylene pet is completely different from plastic. And then you ask yourself a question, is there a possible solution that this pet, can we actually do without pet in this context? If we don't have items on pet, because when you look at it from a CSD point of view, also look at it from a water point of view. How many boreholes, how many water corporation is working in Nigeria? How do you source clean water today? Apart from people who has uh, boreholes in their houses. But that is not justifying why we should litter the environment with pet. But I'm trying to also say that PET is different from plastic because when you look at the pure water sachet, those things are plastic. And then look at other plastic materials. Those are even more, uh, they are not even biodegradable. You put them there, they will stay there. But the group is working on it. And that is the best I can say for now. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we have just one more question um, before we end this okay. question and answer segment. Um, someone would like to know if you can give an example um, where a bad product had to be renovated and what steps we're taking to improve it. Where a bad product have to be renovated and it becomes successful, right? Yes, sir. Uh, um, I'm trying to be very cautious here because when you mention a brand, now I don't want it to be seen as a the marketing a brand, but there have been series of those and of which I have led one. In my, in my days in Guinness, uh, when I was the marketing manager for, not even a marketing manager, I was a brand manager for Lager Brand. I was the one managing Hap Lager then. And Hap was very unsuccessful in the marketplace because people complain about some packaging and quality issues that we have. They complained that the crown cork of the brand was very rusty. You know, when you stack it in trade over time, it gets rusted. And then they complained that sometimes you see sediments in the product. And sometimes the labels are very tacky, old bottles and all whatnot. So people stays away from the brand and then they the, the, the default brand for them then was like Star and Gouda. Because then in the, in, the, in the early 2000, between 2000 and 2006, we have not had the multiplicity of brands that we have in the Nigerian lager landscape now. Then what, do I, what did I do as a, a young brand manager? I made a proposal to the marketing director to say, you know what? I want us to renovate this brand. We're not changing the name, but we're gonna renovate it. And what are we going to do within the renovation space? We need to do liquid optimization. We need to change the liquid. So we got the best of German experts to give us the right liquid. Then we need to do a label refresh, you know, put a brilliant label that is very attractive. And then we need to, you know, raise the quality of the crown cocks that we're using for the brand. Because the first thing first is to deal with the product, make sure that the product is right. And then we, we went into research to do a test landscape, you know, put a blind test, put this brand and test it over a pool of 2,500 consumers. And when we are doing the blind test, we are testing it with other beer brands 
within the within the category to say, okay, uh, how do you see the taste of brand A, brand B, brand C, brand D, and brand F, where we, the managers of the brand, know the brand that is 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 half. And after it came out from that blind test, it came out better than most of the highly rated beer brands in Nigeria. Then we know we have a brand because we know we have a very good liquid. Now, it does not end there. You have a very good product. How do you communicate it? What is your route to market structure? And what are the channels and the occasions where you want to deploy this product? And that is where communications comes in. That is where brand positioning comes in. And then when we want to go to trade, we are honest with ourselves that the consumers knew the reason why they detested us, knew the reason why they did not want to consume our brand. They say we are dirty. They say we, we always have sediment inwards in the inside the bottle. And then we came out with a copy line that we put on the board. We said triple filtered to perfection. So playing on the sentiment of, of, of an average Nigerian that when you filter a product, first time, second time, third time, you are definitely going to get a cleaner, a cleaner version of that product. So we went to trade with triple filter to perfection. And that is acknowledge, acknowledging that we have a problem, but we have resolved our problem. And then with that communication, we went into trade and the rest is history. But if you ask me, is there anything like triple filter to perfection in the, in the brewing process of beer today? I will tell you there's none. Every beer goes through that triple, triple filtration process, just like every beer goes through a cold, a, a, a goes through cold brew. But our competitor then were using millions of tiny bu bubbles that they were cold filtered and they were cold brewed and they put it on their label. So we need to look for a catchy phrase that we can use to draw consumer sentiment on the brand. And when we have done this, I tell you within a space of one, one year, two years, three years, the brand was flying off the shelf. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we've learned a whole lot today and um, time, will permit, time will not permit us to continue. Um, for those of us who joined in um, why Mr. Emmanuel was taking this session, and you are wondering who is Mr. Emmanuel, um, I'd like to introduce him again. Mr. Emmanuel is the Group Marketing Director of Jotna Managing Limited, that's the popular Lacassera company. And I'm sure you agree with me that he has done a whole lot of justice to this topic, planning for marketing effectiveness. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, for our participants, I've been wondering um, what is Rome Business School? What are we all about? Um, Rome Business School is a managerial institution and quickly we'll be taking um, closing remark from our program director, Dr. Adobe. Please let's welcome her. I hope, good afternoon everyone. Um, it has indeed been an exciting time hearing from an orator in marketing field. Indeed, if we had left Emmanuel Agu right now, he's going to take us to the next three, four hours and he won't get tired. Indeed, he remains a major person, a major player in the marketing field. And I cannot even just want him to change this name from Miss Pan. to anything else. So um, I would like to first mention that Emmanuel Agu is a faculty of Rome Business School. And so this is one person you're going to be hearing and seeing a lot from as time goes desirous of bridging the gap between um, 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 what happens in academics and what happens in industry. Uh, first things first, I want to bring our greetings from our founding president, Professor Antonio Ragusa in Italy, 
And I also want to give sincere recognitions and thanks from our, our country director, Dr. Humphrey Akanazu. Indeed, RBS remains targeted at growing better managers for a better world. In RBS, we offer various programs which range from the international human resources, data science management, uh, a prestige and executive MBA, uh, marketing and sales, uh, uh, marketing and communication as well, and, uh, and agribusiness management. And our newest on board is the entrepreneurship and innovation. So indeed, this training is not just for everyone who is in the marketing space, but for every entrepreneur who is intending to innovate on his business. Because yes, we're still in the month of January and the future of the year is still cut out for us. The essence of all of this is to ensure that all, everyone is aware of what Run Business School can actually do for us not just as individuals, but what can actually happen in our various organizations. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all, let you know that we have two programs. We have two intakes. We have the March to intake and we have the October intake. So just in case you're trying to make up your mind, please feel free to quickly come in and join our program because Rome Business School just watch your back. If you are here, you are certain you're going to be having a ball because we're going to have lots and lots of seminars of this sort and webinars of this nature coming in. We have a range of faculty that cut across various, um, uh, various um, areas from the Indians to the Nigerians, to those in Canada, to those all over. Our faculty are, are top notch and none of them has less than 15 years experience in the industry. So it's not just about telling you about the theory, but actually the application, just as Emmanuel Agu has just done. So I want to say a big thank you once more to our students who have made our time to attend. I recognize all faculty who were also able to attend and to our visitors. We say welcome, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, thank you very much to our moderator, um, comfort, Ogaga, and I also want to hand the button right over to herself and the career services right now. I remain Dr. Adobe Arigizo, the program director. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we'll see you again in our next webinar. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Wish you all a lovely afternoon. All right. Thank you very much. OK, I'm off. Oh. All right, uh, thank, thank you, you so very Accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001-2015 certifications, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 
2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality systems that provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long-standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from. With practical teachings, easy-to-apply methodologies, and real-time application opportunities through assignments and projects. Master of Business Administration Program. You'd gain global experience, develop your skills and competencies, you'd be able to introduce fresh ideas to your workplace. Through newly acquired classroom concepts, knowledge, and tools learned from peers and expert faculty, you would be able to innovate at a global level, become a leader in your industry, and also gain skills that'd improve your ability to read the market and recognize trends and potential changes in your industry. The Executive MBA program is one year, designed for busy professionals, allows them to concentrate on business and also acquire new innovative skills. Our programs have been accredited by major international organizations like European Foundation for Management Development, European Union, Principles for Responsible Management Education, European Association for Distance Learning, Project Management Institute, PMI, among others. The registration process has been simplified, with our career service expert there to guide you along. We offer a flexible learning plan, 100% online or on campus, that makes it easy for you to juggle learning with your regular job. Our alumni body gives you an array of industry professionals to interact with, learn from, and network with. To get started, visit our website, www.romebusinessschool.ng You can send an email to Nigeria at romebusinessschool.it or call 0906755624. You can also start your enrollment here, www.enrollment.romebusinessschool.ng Rome Business School Better Managers for a Better World the business world and the very dynamic and highly competitive current situation of economic uncertainty demands qualified professionals with solid knowledge of different management areas and with personal and professional skills, such as versatility, adaptability, reflection, determination, and creativity. When it is time for employers to rank their employees, accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001, 2015 certifications, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 9001, 2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality systems that provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long-standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from. With practical teachings, easy-to-apply methodologies, and real-time application opportunities through assignments and projects. There are numerous benefits you stand to gain from attending the Rome Business School Executive Master of Business Administration program. You'd gain global experience, develop your skills and competencies, you'd be able to introduce fresh ideas to your workplace. Through newly acquired classroom concepts, knowledge, and tools learned from peers and expert faculty, you would be able to innovate at a global level, become a leader in your industry, and also gain skills that'd improve your ability to read the market and recognize trends and potential changes in your industry.
The Executive MBA program is one year. Designed for busy professionals, allows them to concentrate on business and also acquire new innovative skills. Our programs have been accredited by major international organizations like European Foundation for Management Development, European Union, Principles for Responsible Management Education, European Association for Distance Learning, Project Management Institute, PMI, among others. The registration process has been simplified, with our career service expert there to guide you along. We offer a flexible learning plan, 100% online or on campus, that makes it easy for you to juggle learning with your regular job. Our alumni body gives you an array of industry professionals to interact with, learn from, and network with. To get started, visit our website, www.romebusinessschool.ng. You can send an email to Nigeria at romebusinessschool.it or call 0906755624. You can also start your enrollment here www.enrollment.romebusinessschool.ng Rome Business School Better Managers for a Better World The business world and the very dynamic and highly competitive current situation of economic uncertainty demands qualified professionals with solid knowledge of different management areas and with personal and professional skills such as versatility, adaptability, reflection, determination, and creativity. When it is time for employers to rank their employees, accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001 2015 certification, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 9001 2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality systems that provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long-standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from. With practical teachings, easy-to-apply methodologies, and real-time application opportunities through assignments and projects. There are numerous benefits you stand to gain from attending the Rome Business School Executive Master of Business Administration program. You'd gain global experience, develop your skills and competencies, you'd be able to introduce fresh ideas to your workplace. Through newly acquired classroom concepts, knowledge, and tools learned from peers and expert faculty, you would be able to innovate at a global level, become a leader in your industry, and also gain skills that would improve your ability to read the market and recognize trends and potential changes in your industry. The Executive MBA program is one year, designed for busy professionals, allows them to concentrate on business and also acquire new innovative skills. Our programs have been accredited by major international organizations like European Foundation for Management Development, European Union, Principles for Responsible Management Education, European Association for Distance Learning, Project Management Institute, PMI, among others. The registration process has been simplified, with our career service expert there to guide you along. We offer a flexible learning plan. 100% online or on campus, that makes it easy for you to juggle learning with your regular job. Our alumni body gives you an array of industry professionals to interact with, learn from, and network with. To get started, visit our website, www.romebusinessschool.ng.
You can send an email to Nigeria at RomeBusinessSchool.it or call 0906755 you can also start your enrollment here www.enrollment.romebusinessschool.ng Rome Business School Better Managers for a Better World The business world and the very dynamic and highly competitive current situation of economic uncertainty demands qualified professionals with solid knowledge of different management areas and with personal and professional skills such as versatility, adaptability, reflection, determination, and creativity. When it is time for employers to rank their employees, accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001. 2015 certifications, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 9001 2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality system to provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from. With practical teachings, easy to apply methodologies, and real-time application opportunities through assignments and projects. There are numerous benefits you stand to gain from attending the Rome Business School Executive Master of Business Administration program. You gain global experience develop your skills and competencies, you'd be able to introduce fresh ideas to your workplace. Through newly acquired classroom concepts, knowledge, and tools learned from peers and expert faculty, you would be able to innovate at a global level, become a leader in your industry, and also gain skills that would improve your ability to read the market and recognize trends and potential changes in your industry. The Executive MBA program is one year, designed for busy professionals, allows them to concentrate on business and also acquire new innovative skills. Our programs have been accredited by major international organizations like European Foundation for Management Development, European Union, Principles for Responsible Management Education, European Association for Distance Learning, Project Management Institute, PMI, among others. The registration process has been simplified, with our career service expert there to guide you along. We offer a flexible learning plan, 100% online or on campus, that makes it easy for you to juggle learning with your regular job. Our alumni body gives you an array of industry professionals to interact with, learn from, and network with. To get started, visit our website, www.romebusinessschool.ng. You can send an email to Nigeria at romebusinessschool.it or call 0906755 You can also start your enrollment here, www.enrollment.romebusinessschool.ng. Rome Business School Better Managers for a Better World The business world and the very dynamic and highly competitive current situation of economic uncertainty demands qualified professionals with solid knowledge of different management areas and with personal and professional skills, such as versatility, adaptability, reflection, determination, and creativity. When it is time for employers to rank their employees, Accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. 
Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001, 2015 certifications, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 9001, 2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality systems that provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long-standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from. With practical teachings, easy-to-apply methodologies, and real-time application opportunities through assignments and projects. There are numerous benefits you stand to gain from attending the Rome Business School Executive Master of Business Administration program. You'd gain global experience, develop your skills and competencies, you'd be able to introduce fresh ideas to your workplace. Through newly acquired classroom concepts, knowledge, and tools learned from peers and expert faculty, you would be able to innovate at a global level, become a leader in your industry, and also gain skills that'd improve your ability to read the market and recognize trends and potential changes in your industry. The Executive MBA program is one year, designed for busy professionals, allows them to concentrate on business and also acquire new innovative skills. Our programs have been accredited by major international organizations like European Foundation for Management Development, European Union, Principles for Responsible Management Education, European Association for Distance Learning, Project Management Institute, PMI, among others. The registration process has been simplified, with our career service expert there to guide you along. We offer a flexible learning plan, 100% online or on campus, that makes it easy for you to juggle learning with your regular job. Our alumni body gives you an array of industry professionals to interact with, learn from, and network with. To get started, visit our website, www.romebusinessschool.ng. You can send an email to Nigeria at romebusinessschool.it or call 0906755624. You can also start your enrollment here, www.enrollment.romebusinessschool.ng. Rome Business School Better Managers for a Better World The business world and the very dynamic and highly competitive current situation of economic uncertainty demands qualified professionals with solid knowledge of different management areas and with personal and professional skills, such as versatility, adaptability, reflection, determination, and creativity. When it is time for employers to rank their employees, accolades don't go to those who work hard but to those who work smart. The amount of impact you can make as a business owner or as an employee in your organization relies ultimately on your experiences and your wealth of skills and knowledge. Rome Business School is a managerial training and research institute par excellence. Our mission in Nigeria is to train entrepreneurs, managers, and professionals to a level of excellence in their competence and their ethical approach to business and work. This would help them to play a part in the development of the economy. Rome Business School has obtained the ISO 9001, 2015 certifications, which recognizes the top quality standards of its training activities. The ISO 9001, 2015 accreditation gives our institution the quality systems that provide the foundation for excellent student satisfaction and continuous improvement. Our faculties are industry professionals with long-standing years of proven experiential experience. They provide our students with years of experience both within and outside Nigeria to tap from.